Hey everybody, Guitar Guts back. This video was a continuation and breakdown of one of the guitars that I featured in my short scale bass comparison video. So if you haven't seen that overall video yet, you might wanna go watch it first to get a view of this one compared to three other basses, and then you can come back and I'll tell you the specifics about this bass in this video. This is the Ibanez Tallman TMB30 short scale bass. These little basses are super fun. I originally didn't buy this bass for myself. I bought this one uh, to keep at school uh, where we have a guitar club where students can play guitar and bass. And I found this thing at Guitar Center, I think for just a few dollars over a hundred bucks. And I thought, well, that'll be a decent little guitar for them to noodle around with. It didn't have a battery or anything in it, which is good because batteries run down over time. And I thought that'll just be good, something good, short scale that they can play around with at school. And it's held up really well. I mean, this thing's been used a lot. It's been drug around, uh, taken out and abused once a week by me and the other students. And there is nothing wrong with it. It's just a great little bass. Um, and so I enjoyed playing it so much at school that I eventually found another one used and I bought it to play at home because it's just a great feeling little bass to noodle around on. Uh, and the value for money ratio with this bass is just astounding. This is a fantastic little bass that rivals basses that uh, cost $400 more. And there's just not that much difference in quality, I don't think, uh, between this one and stuff that costs way more. Now, um, this little bass uh, has a really good little uh, straight pull over the nut string setup. The only string you might want to put a few more winds around the post on is the G string right here, just to get it on down the post a little bit and make sure the brake angle is good over the nut if you are using light gauge strings. If you're using heavier gauge strings, probably won't matter. Um, this thing has a great feeling neck on it. Um, you know, it's it doesn't have a high gloss or anything like that. It's very matte finish feeling. Very slick, very well sanded, very well made little neck. The On at least my two versions here, there have been no sharp fret ends or anything like that. The frets are all finished very well. They might not be super highly polished, you know, when you get them, but um, they feel great. Uh, absolutely no discomfort whatsoever. One of the most comfortable necks on a guitar that I have ever played. And part of that is down to the fact that it's a, it's a little bit, not much, but it's a little bit thicker than some of the other guitars like the Fender Mustang, but not enough to be uncomfortable at all. But the other thing is the um, neck width is actually a little bit wider than it is on the Fender and Squire uh, bases I compared this one to. They are 1.5 and this one's 1.6. Um, which is a little bit wider than the normal 1.5 jazz bass neck width. It's not quite a P bass width, uh, which is, P bass is a little bit too wide for me. I'm not crazy about that, but this one's sort of in a Goldilocks zone, which gives you a little bit of extra space here between the strings, a little bit of extra space down here, uh, especially for slap technique. That's what I like about this one the most. It's super comfortable for that because of that tiny bit of extra spacing between the strings, but it's not so much that when I'm uh, doing string changes or when I'm doing picking techniques uh, with a guitar pick that I feel like I'm searching for the string, if you know what I mean. Uh, they're close enough to be comfortable, uh, but far enough to not feel cramped. And I think that's what I like about this um, neck so much. I just love it. Now, moving down to the body, the body is super comfortable, and I think it looks pretty cool. I, I like that shape. It's almost uh, reminiscent of the uh, Fender Jaguar, maybe a little more rounded than that. Um, it balances well, sits on your knee well. It doesn't neck dive too bad. Um, they're fairly light little bases, so you might get a little bit of neck dive on it, but not much. Um, <clears throat> I like that the neck flares out a little bit at the end. I think that's a little more comfortable. It reminds me a little bit of a jazz bass down at this end. Now, the um, here, here's the weird thing about this little bass. Now, I've already talked to you about the Fender Mustang and the Sterling Stingray and the Squire uh, Vintage Modified um, Jaguar bass. I changed stuff out on those. Pickups, wiring, you know, I had sand necks and stuff like that. I've done nothing to these. 
I like the pickups. I like the control setup. I have done nothing but put a new set of strings on these things. And I'm satisfied with it. I'm happy with it that way. I think the pickups sound great. Now, I am, full disclosure here, I am not a bass player. I'm a guitar player. So when I came over to bass, maybe I like pickups that are a little bit clearer, uh, a little bit brighter than some bass players would like. So I like these. I've heard people say they thought they were too bright. I like them. Uh, and so these, this is the only set of pickups in any of my short scale basses that I haven't thought about changing out. You know, I, they're just, they're good. I like them. Um, the control, you've got uh, volume, volume, tone, which is fine. I like the fact that I can blend the pickups together. I like the fact that I've uh, got the option of blending a little bit of the P and with a little bit of the J bass pickup. Uh, so that's really good. I think the bridge is fine, you know. Um, I do know that some people with some strings have had some problems with intonation because that screw doesn't go all the way through the saddle. And so if you need to back that thing up too far, you might not be able to. I haven't had any problem with it with standard, you know, like a 100 gauge E string or a 95 gauge E string. But if you're going way up in size, you might run into some problems like that. I haven't had any. Um, all the controls and everything on it feel solid. The bridge feels solid. Tuners feel uh, sturdy and they stay in tune well. I love this input jack. Um, I'm not necessarily crazy about where it is, but it's super easy to plug into and unplug from that thing. Uh, some guitars and basses just make you work way too hard <laughs> to get that thing plugged in and, and get it back out of there. It's like it's stuck sometimes and you feel like you're ripping something to get it out of there. But these go in real smooth, but they always click. You can feel a very solid click into place once that plug gets in there. And it's never fallen out or anything like that. It's just a very easy one to use. And I like this little bass so much that I bought its bigger brother, um, the TMB100. Now, that one, I love the neck on it. I love the feel. I love the pickups. That one is also a great bass. I'm not crazy, though, about the active circuit in that one. Not that it doesn't work. It works too well, though, sometimes. And you can actually get too much treble in your sound that's sort of ear piercing. You know, it's um, it allows you to adjust too much uh, using that little preamp, which is one of the reasons I like this. No batteries to worry about, uh, no preamp to worry about. It's just straightforward. You got your pickups, you got your tone controls, you got your volumes, and it it works well. So yeah, if you're looking for a short scale bass and you don't have much money. You are not sacrificing much going with the Ibanez TMB30 compared to some of the much more expensive ones. I like it just as much as those, uh, which re really says a lot for what Ibanez is cranking out for that price point. Well, anyway, I hope that gives you enough information, and I appreciate you stopping by and watching. Talk to you later.